Weber syndrome is also known as ventral midbrain syndrome. I'll start with drawing by drawing an axial section of the midbrain and then we will discuss the different structures that are involved and the clinical features of the Weber syndrome. So let's start here. This is sort of a rough sketch of the midbrain. Okay, and we have this is the anterior part and here is the posterior part posterior part of the midbrain I'll use different colors to illustrate different structures so let's start by this is at the level of superior colliculus so I'll draw the superior colliculus here then we have the aqueduct of Sylvius. Aqueduct of Sylvius is somewhere around here. So, so let's say this is the aqueduct of Sylvius. Then you have the periaqueductal gray matter. So the periaqueductal means around the aqueduct. So this, if this is the aqueduct of Sylvius, the periaqueductal gray matter is somewhere in here and then we have the third nerve nuclei and the fascicle of the third nerve so the third nerve nucleus is here this is on one side and you have the other side here the third nerve nuclei and the third nerve sort of goes like this so you have the fascicle of the third nerve here now you have the red nucleus so I'll draw the red nucleus here. The red nuclei are structures somewhere around here. And then we have these structures here. I'll give you the labeling just in a minute here. So if you look at the axial section of the midbrain, just let's review some of the structures. So this structure up here, this part here, is the tectum. Then this structure here, so between this structure and this here, this is the tegmentum. And this here, this whole thing, this big thing here, this is the cerebral peduncle. So we have the tectum here. This is the tectum. We have the tegmentum and the cerebral peduncle. The midbrain is supplied by branches of the posterior cerebral artery. So you have the basilar artery come here, divides into the two, two of the posterior cerebral arteries that go here and some of the perforator arteries go and supply the cortical spinal tract. So the cortical spinal tracts are around this he area here. You have the cortical spinal tracts here, you have the cortical bulbar tracts around this area. Now let's say that this person has a stroke. Stroke affecting one of the one of the perforating branches of the posterior cerebral artery. So if there is a stroke that affects this area here, goes here around this area, let's say this is the area that has stroke now. There is a stroke in this area. So what structures will be involved? So let's go through the anatomy again we will have 
the third nerve here, so this was the third nerve, you have the third nerve involved which would give an ipsilateral third nerve palsy. So you will have a ptosis, the eye would be di deviated outwards, the pupil will be dilated. Number two, you have the corticospinal tracts involved. So here were the corticospinal tracts here. So if the corticospinal tracts are involved in this area, it will give you contralateral or cont contralateral hemiparesis, including the lower half of the face. So patient has ipsilateral third nerve palsy and a contralateral weakness of the face, arm, and leg. Let's go to this image. This is an actual MRI. And in this MRI, I will first draw an outline of the midbrain. So let's start here. This is the midbrain. These are the cerebral peduncles. You have the tegmentum, then you have the tectum. Okay. So this is the this is the midbrain. You have the third nerve nuclei somewhere around this area. So let's say those are the third nerve nuclei. The third nerves move anteriorly and the fascicle exits here. So you have the third nerve coming out. You have the corticospinal tracts in this region, this brown colored region. You have the corticospinal tracts around this area. Now let's say that this person has a stroke. So the stroke affects the anterior part. So I'll draw the stroke here now. And this is the stroke. So you have a stroke. The, in this, this is the right side now. This is the left side. The stroke is on the right side. So you will have a right third nerve palsy and a left hemiparesis. This is all that is to Weber syndrome. I hope you enjoyed the talk. I will see you soon.